It's college basketball on the ACC Network. We're in Little John Coliseum where today the Big South preseason favorite UNC Asheville Bulldogs are in to take on the Clemson Tigers. Hi friends, with Tim Bray, Pete Kennedy with you, a Tigers team going for a third straight win, coming off that impressive come-from-behind victory at Ohio State in the middle of the week. And it was a strong second half, Pete. The Tigers were down by seven and outscored Ohio State by 21 points on the road. Uh, Three-point shooting had a lot to do with it. Let's give you the starting lineups and UNC Asheville featuring the reigning freshman of the year in the Big South, Macy Oteague, who's on his way maybe to a conference player of the year season. 16 points a game, 52% on three-pointers and 87% from the wow line. As for the Tigers, sure, the other night at Ohio State, Marquise Reed at 22, Shelton Mitchell at 19, but Eli Thomas was huge on both ends of the floor. Yeah, when he stays out of foul trouble and he can be free to block shots, he's a, he's a real threat underneath. And Elijah Thomas and the Tigers will try to continue what's been a good run at home so far this season and a very solid start to this 2017 and 18 campaign. Tigers at 6-1 and one and have continued to play great basketball in November under Brad Brownell. Well now we turn the calendar to December and once again Clemson about to tip it off against another preseason conference favorite. Last time out in Little John a week ago Friday they took on Southwestern Athletic Conference favorite Texas Southern and got the win in that game. They'll try to do it again here against UNCA, Ahmad Thomas, one of their guards, jumping center and ends up winning the battle with Elijah Thomas, no relation. Tigers open and a man for man. Probably have to see a lot of that. The perimeter defense is going to be important in this game. A guard-oriented Bulldogs team. They don't go very big. Kind of the tendency in the league they're in. That's Teague with it out high. Thomas right of the lane. A soft touch for a guy who shoots 43% and comes off a 24-point performance in their win Wednesday night at home against USC Upstate. And we talk a lot about UNC Asheville's three-point shooting. And what do they do? They get points in the paint on their first possession. Tigers slow start to the night in Columbus. And in this case, unable to do anything the first time they have the ball. As Alec Winnook comes up with the steal. Through the lane he goes. Battling inside is Thomas, and he gets the putback. And two quick buckets for Ahmad Thomas, the senior out of Danville, Virginia. Good hustle on the inside. You can see that young man has come to play with each of the first two buckets. They're a very good defensive team is UNCA, and that time an unforced error and a second straight turnover by Clemson. But don't be surprised to see a lot of steals out of a team that's in the top 20 in that category under Nick McDevitt doing a fine job at his alma mater in his fifth season, going for his 83rd win today. Winook out high, Ooh, a little fake off to the right, no, and the rebound by Dante Grantham. Here come the Tigers looking to push the pace in, but I think they've they got a big height advantage inside. Mitchell, a little bit too strong. There's Teague with the rebound. It was transition basketball that certainly helped in that comeback the other night at Ohio State. There is a spin move inside of the bucket up and in for Kevin Vanetta. And Brad Brownell has watched his team for just under two minutes of basketball and has seen enough. He will use his first timeout. We'll keep it right here and note the fact that, as you mentioned, the half-court style may benefit the Tigers today because when you're a guard-oriented team like UNCA, you want to get it up and down. Yeah, but what's interesting is, you know, this UNC Asheville team is uh, shooting 47% on three-point shots, and they haven't taken one yet. They've really gone inside against the Tigers, and with success, up 6 to nothing. all three of their shots, all five of their attempts are inside the paint. UNCA's two losses coming on the road this season. Brad Brownell, year number eight, at the helm of the Tigers, and not only going for his 131st victory here, but getting close to 300 in his career. That, of course, includes prior stops at UNC Wilmington and also at Wright State. You'd have thought that maybe in the four years he was at UNCW, since they're in the same system as UNCA, he would have faced them, but he is coaching for the first time against the Bulldogs. And Likewise for his counterpart, Nick McDevitt, against Clemson. Just into the game, Amir sends the freshman. Gets it back right there. Looks like a zone. And Shelton Mitchell will try to penetrate on the first bucket of the game. Goes for the junior out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. Against a team from his home state. And Mitchell was very successful doing that type of thing in the second half against Ohio State. 
Teague getting the attention of Marquise Reed out on the wing. Tigers' best perimeter defender, arguably. Teague, floater across the lane, leaves it short, and that's Grantham with a second rebound. DeVoe, quick catch and shoot. And the Tigers 0 for 2 early on from long range. Thomas still staying in the man for man every possession. Thomas out of the game now for the Tigers. Clemson's Thomas. And UNC Asheville's Thomas has three quick buckets. He has six of their eight points so far and back out to a six point advantage. You would not have thought that uh, Asheville's Thomas has a six nothing lead in points scored against Clemson's Thomas. Reed from downtown. Marquise Reed off that effort the other night in Columbus when he had 22 points to lead the way. 32% beyond the arc. Tigers think he can shoot better. He shot better oh, yeah. than that last year. He should be a 40% career th uh, three-point shooter. There's Teague from outside. Defender in his face. Good job by Grantham. Here comes Mitchell and the Tigers. DeVoe once again from the right wing. Can't get that one to fall. And it's Vanetta on the rebound. Thomas of UNCA looked over to his head coach with a bit of a look at the confusion in terms of what they wanted to do offensively. It's Asheville. Some subs getting ready to come in for Asheville. Inside went up, tries the hook on Sims, who would add nothing of it. Another block for Amir Sims. Yeah, he had a great key block against Ohio State. Oh, backdoor and DeVoe with the general flush. Nice feed that time by Reed. And just like that, Tigers back within a point. So they've not necessarily lit it up offensively, but Asheville's been hot and hasn't been able to build any bigger than that early six-point lead in a couple of occasions. And now trying to maintain the advantage before the first official timeout. Teague defended by Reed. And you see the shot clock under 10. So Veneta from downtown, one of their better three-point shooters, but not that time. Looking for the first lead change of the game. Mike Mitchell wanted to vote to do something else than he did. Right of the lane, Mitchell forcing it no, and the rebound taken down by Drew Rackley. Good team defense that time by UNC Asheville. And the travel will be called on Thomas, so the turnover by UNCA. Bulldogs coming into Little John, jumped out of the quick lead, but the Tigers back within one. UNC Asheville, the 8 to 7 lead early on. They jumped out to a quick 6 0 start, and they've got a fine senior guard, Ahmad Thomas. Yeah, Thomas uh, with a nice shot in the paint over Grantham on that first bucket. He's already got six points. And, and Alec nice Winook, a 6 7 player for him, but that time, sixth block of the year by Amir Sims, who, as I said earlier, had a big block against Ohio State. And then DeVoe with the dunk off a nice feed from Reed. As we welcome you back into Little John Coliseum and along with Tim Bray, Pete Yannity with you. Good to be back alongside you here in Hoops. And, well, let's face it, a Clemson team that's had a few days to digest the Ohio State win, a big one indeed. And I think at some point, transition basketball is something you'll see them do in this game as it's probably the tempo UNCA wants to see eventually. Yeah, right. Got to get out on the rebounding. And rebounding so far is 5-5. Five to five. Tigers looking for their first lead of the ball game. Clyde Kraft just checked in with Elijah Thomas underneath, and I'm not sure if Jonathan Bear got a hand on that or not. It'll say in Clemson's end. Take another look at number one in blue. Now, that was simply a matter of losing the handle for Thomas. DeVoe stays out there. Now, Thomas is guarding Thomas underneath. Big height advantage for the Tigers. Shot clock winding down. Reed out front. Can't get it to go, but Sims takes it away from his own teammate. And then Bear with the rejection. He had a four-block game the other night against Upstate. and gets his first after just checking in. From the corner, on the way for a three-attempt no for Banana. And here come the Tigers. Kraft didn't see action the other night at Ohio State. Saw extended minutes against Texas Southern. And we get a... Infraction away from the ball. Legal screen on Sims. Sims picking up his first foul and the first on either side in this ball game. Brad Brownell probably thinking, well, freshman will be freshman. 
Grantham back in the game, replacing Sims. So we go senior in place of the freshman. Tiger staying in that man-to-man, -man, it looks like. Might have been in and out in every possession. Out high, Thomas. And there's DeVoe with the rebound. So again, Clemson looking to take its first lead of the afternoon. 6-9. Bear trying to defend the 6-9. Thomas, nothing doing, says Elijah. At 11 points the other night, but as we noted, some big numbers otherwise. Eight points and four blocks, two of them in the same sequence. Yeah, he so. really did everything in the second half. He didn't take a shot the first half at Ohio State. Nashville in a scoring drought of better than three and a half minutes. As they see their lead go away for the first time. Miller just checked in, kind of as an odd shot, and he wishes he had that one back. And here come the Tigers. Still a man for man for Asheville, but they are kind of sloughing off, not denying that perimeter passes. Got to be careful out on the perimeter. Teague and Thomas for the Bulldogs have combined for 25 steals this year. Here's Grantham on a nice look from Reed, and he finishes in the bucket. Dante Grantham getting in the scoring column, and Clemson builds the three-point advantage. Tough shot, great balance for Clemson so far. All five starters have a bucket. Tigers on a 9-0 run. Thomas, six of the eight points, make it eight of their ten. Is the answer. Scores their first bucket in about four minutes on the game clock. Well, Thomas reminds me of the uh, Williams kid who played for Tennessee in, against the Tigers in an exhibition game in a big game against Clemson. They got some guards on their roster that were probably looked at or overlooked by some of the bigger schools, and for some reason or another, didn't work out there. Is Marquise Reed drains one from the corner. Tigers build their biggest lead so far. And Reed now two out of three beyond the arc. Tigers two out of six as a team. As you said, 32% coming in. He might be at 36% by the end of the game. Oh, and Bear gets the friendly roll. I mean, these guys are in a neighboring state only about an hour away. But, uh, boy, that may be a little bit too much local hospitality there. Back to a one-point ball game. Invoked a bit of a Don Nelson shot uh, on that one. <laughs> there is a time fans. 44% <laughs> three-point shooter for the 6'9 postman for the Bulldog. Traps saw the double team comes. DeVoe feeds Thomas who throws it down. Terrific ball movement. The pass before that uh, by Trap. A quick pass. They got it around the perimeter and got it down low for the dunk. Elijah Thomas. A couple of quick field goals out of that. Official timeout. And that time Trapp knocking it away. Has numbers. Thomas back to defend. What a move by Trapp who finishes. Ah, pretty fake over toward Grantham. And the Tigers build their biggest lead of the afternoon. He, he might have done it just because the uh, defender came up. I don't know that he went into his initial move thinking he was going to do that fake behind the back. Has another steal? Almost by Reed. It goes out of bounds, but not before a foul will be called against UNCA. Their first of the game goes against Raekwon Miller. Timeout on the court. We're back after this. Back in Little John, Tim Bray, dare I say that a little bit of Pistol Pete Maravich was invoked right there by Pete Clyde Maravich. Trump. A little bit of Grayson Marshall back in the day. Clemson's all-time leader in assists. By Trapp. We told you last Friday saw quite a bit of time due to early foul trouble for Marquise Reed against Texas Southern. And then uh, the other night uh, was a spectator up in Columbus, but the freshman guard from the Columbia area, a star at Lower Richland High School, which has a rich basketball tradition, trying to work his way into more playing time. You can just see the potential, and this coaching staff is going to be around him, has him under their belt for about a year or so. He is uh, certainly a guy who's going to contribute big time in the future. Protege of former All-ACC Clemson guard, Edward Scott. Scott was his AAU coach. Out of the timeout. Tigers started three out of nine from the field, but they're five out of five since from both long range and close to the hoop. See, they're giving attention to Elijah Thomas underneath, trying to deny him the ball. Ten on the shot clock. Reed underneath. Grantham out high. And Dante, a little bit too strong. And the rebound taken down by Jalen Seeger. 
Bulldogs, a team that can get hot in a hurry from long range. They shoot 45 percent. Also pretty good close to the basket. Lenook feeding right in front of the hoop. What a nice look that was and a nice finish by Bear. Bears had some good games off the bench for Astro. Hasn't started yet this year. Mitchell back after a rest. And Ted Valentine, one of our officials who you kind of tend to notice when he's doing a game, calls the illegal screen. Second illegal screen called on the Tigers. Here's the UNC Asheville's last bucket on the other end. A fine play by Bear over Thomas, who's Clemson's top shot blocker this year with 15. And Elijah Thomas called for that foul, so the Tigers two as a team, and that's the first on Elon. As you see, UNCA with one team foul so far. And off the foot it goes of Seegers. Here come the Tigers. Mitchell up under and in. Oh, nice move by Shelton Mitchell with two defenders on either side. The second driving layup of the game once out of the Clemson's normal offensive set. Backdoor feed underneath. Veneta can't get the bucket, but a foul, and I believe that's number two on Elijah Thomas. And he'll go to the bench for the rest of the half, I presume. And that brings us back to our initial point about Thomas, but first off, Check out Shelton Mitchell and what he can do when airborne. Yeah, nice little uh, change of direction. A little ice cream scoop for the bucket. Kevin Vanetta out of Upper Arlington, Ohio, a junior. 79% from the line this year. And suffice it to say, would never be considered the most famous alum of Upper Arlington. Someone named Jack Nicholas was a student athlete there back in the day. And interestingly, he was on a state championship team in high school at Upper Arlington. And just down the road at Western Carolina, one of UNC Asheville's rivals, there's a sophomore forward named Anno Steger, who was also on that team. Right. Those two guys will go against each other in a game here coming up when they play Western Carolina at the... U.S. Cellular Center in downtown Asheville. First uh, press we've seen from Asheville here in possession. Asheville's kind of changed up their defense here recently. Last two possessions they've uh, gone zone, and now they're going a little three-quarter court trap. Told you, Ted Valentine's in the house, and Lee Cassell and Pat Driscoll will also work the crew, but TB Ted is what they call him, and you'll notice him throughout the game, but he is a great official and a good guy, too. So Sims replacing Thomas, who has those two fouls, we can see what UNCA does defensively in terms of trying to deny the post, trying to beat the shot clock, and it'll come off the glass to Bear. That was the best possession of defense by Asheville so far in the game. Bulldogs give up just under 70 points a game. In the corner, Seegers. And there's Bear for the rebound. We cycle the clock. Vanetta quickly from downtown. They're having a hard time getting it to go. And that was almost a putback. But instead, it's going to be Seegers coming over the back. First on Jalen Seegers, the freshman for them who plays the most. He's out of Greensboro. That one almost bounced off the head of Dante Grantham into the bucket. <laughs> Akin to what happened to Georgia Tech the other night against Grambling when the winning bucket for the Tigers in the upset was a deflection into their basket by a Georgia Tech player. Yeah, amazing. I saw that. Continuing with the trap press. Asheville uh, does this a lot. Mark Donnell is checked in for the Tigers. Mitchell looked inside for Donnell, but instead DeVoe. Mitchell. And Donnell losing the rebound to Ahmad Thomas, pushing the pace. Thomas looking back, and I think when he was up in the air, he wasn't sure where he was going to toss it. There's Teague back to Thomas. Mitchell defending Thomas, and does a nice job that time. Thomas only 6'3", but in a lot of time, a lot of positions, he plays like a center. Grantham from downtown can't get that one to go, so neither team necessarily... Lighting it up from long range, a combined three out of seven teams so far. Teague, their top scorer, can't get it to fall, and Grantham another rebound. Yeah, uncharacteristic poor three-point shooting for Nashville. Nearly 48% coming in on threes. Mitchell defended by Vanetta, a little finger roll. Oh, and that one almost went over the rim. That's a shot he never misses, Pete. 
But he did there. And that'll look low for Thomas. He stays in there with that personal foul drawn moments ago. And now I believe he will head to the line. They'll get Mitchell on the block. Both teams starting to look winded during that sequence. We have continuous action. Like Vanetta and crew trying to get a little bit closer than they are. Tigers lead by three. And seven to go here in the opening half of play. With Tim Bray, Pete Gannity with you back in Little John. Tigers holding a three-point lead over the Bulldogs. Elijah Thomas, well, he's great in the post when he stays out of what you noted coming into our telecast. Foul yeah. trouble. Yeah, he's had some big games this year, but a nice dunk there on the inside off a good entry pass, but he just picked up his second foul, so he's probably going to be on the bench the remainder of the, uh, of the half. Elijah Thomas, the fourth-year junior out of Dallas, Texas. Of course, began his career at Texas A&M. Came eligible right around this time a year ago to play in games with the Tigers. And, you know, it, it's tough to join any entity midway through. And in this case, midway through a season for him is Seegers, a 63% free throw shooter. And this is the first of two. Yeah, showed what he was capable of doing with a 26.16 rebound game against Texas Southern first Tiger to do that since Dale Davis in the 1990 NCAA tournament. 0 for 2 and suffice it to say UNC Asheville a team that shoots 66 percent if they're going to pull the upset today on ACC country they're going to have to have a pretty good day from the line and Reed blowing right by the defender but then knocked away by Seegers it looked like. One up had an open lane for a moment. Seeger's baseline contact. They'll get the block, and let's see if they count it. I think they are. They will. Marquise Reed picking up his first personal. So five now on Clemson. There's two on UNCA. Take another look. Marquise Reed tried to get that established position on the baseline, but didn't. Really. Beautiful shot by Seeger's. Seeger's back to the line out of Greensboro. North Carolina went to High Point Christian. Hey, Greensboro cranks out some really good players. Maybe an underrated town for the amount of basketball talent they produce. And the whole fashion three-point play gives us a tie at 20 apiece. And I remember a guy named Danny Manning came yeah. out of Greensboro 20-so years ago, 30 years ago. And he look around, got a tie score. Look around college hoops and you see a lot of guys from that area, often from the directional Guilford County High Schools, but in this case... Seegers, who got that three-point play and then had to the bench, he went to a private school in that area. Tigers haven't scored in over three minutes. A.J. Oliver for Grantham. Swing pass. Reed takes a look. Maybe waited too long. Rebound with five minutes. So often you see when a guy hesitates from long range, it doesn't work out well. Tigers Especially kept when he's wide open. Yeah. We saw Teague with the ball. Tigers have kept him quiet so far. And now we're going to get a illegal screen call against Alec Winook. It's a legal screen day here yeah. at uh, Little John Coliseum. And let's see what happened there. Apparently, yeah, the bump on yeah. Reed and Ted Valentine would not let that one go. So it's the first on Winook and the third on the Bulldogs. As Winook gets a breather. Of course. A lot of folks on a Sunday afternoon that are Tiger fans have football on their minds for obvious reasons. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as our telecast goes on. But not a bad turnout at all for this battle. Grantham rattles out. Look at DeVoe battling and Reed as well. But it'll be run down by Thomas of UMCA. They look to retake the lead. They jumped out to a 6 0 advantage from the corner. Teague, a little bit too strong. Here comes DeVoe. Accelerates, finishes, and the basket went right by the 6'9 Bear, and the Tigers are back in front by a couple. If you're struggling from three-point land, put your head down and drive to the basket. Directly on their reserve guards. J. Oliver defending Veneta, and the pick by Reed, finishing the other way with a gentle touch. Eight points now for Reed. He's the leading scorer for the Tigers. 
And into the game with seven steals. You love to see it when you can steal and score. Tigers lead by four. They've been up by as many as five. He actually led the Tigers in steals last year with 46. First non-starter to lead Clemson in steals since Sean Tyson back in 1990. And that bucket right there gave him 958 career points. Meanwhile, away from the ball as that one was tipped into the backcourt. We have a foul call on A.J. Oliver. Nice play first by Gabe DeVoe, and then, of course, Marquise Reed. That's right. His layups off the steals can help that field goal percentage. I guess we're in a little bit of a slump. Kind of been a feast or famine. First half, the Tigers start off three for nine, then mid five in a row. So Reed getting close to 1,000 points, and he'll achieve that reasonably early on in just his third year as a player. He's got another year of eligibility left. Little lob that time. The finish by Bear, but a pretty assist by Kevin Vanetta. Bear's been a factor on the inside. At seven points now. And contact away from the ball, and they'll get Bear with the bump against Sims. And for Jonathan Bear, that'll be his first. He'd like to think back to a recent happier time, and that finished right at the bucket. Perfect lob. Well, this Asheville team, you can tell they're well coached. They really play well together. You got a lot of guys who do a lot of the same things, and that's usually a good thing. They yeah. can all relate to the other other's game and style. They basically play the four out, one in approach offensively. Reed way downtown, and Marquise Reed creating another three for Marquise Reed. Now three out of five on the afternoon. He's in double figure scoring with 11. Off a nice screen up there on the high post for that bucket. Seager's the freshman. Inside Thomas, and an offensive foul will be called. A wraparound. Ahmad Thomas. First on Thomas. And right there, and perhaps just a little bit of an attempt at an Academy Award by Marquis. I think it was a big attempt at an Academy Award, quite frankly. But uh, in that case, it'll be clean take what you can get. Got a timeout on the court. 343 remains here in our opening half of play. Tigers matching their largest advantage of the afternoon at five. You may see a recognizable face or two or three in that group right there, and you probably know they were playing a ball game last night, pretty big one, and then they figured out uh, today, got confirmation where their next game will be. Well, at halftime, they will be out on the floor as we will see the recognition of not only the ACC championship, but also winning the state title again in the rivalry battle with South Carolina. Kelly Bryant showing rhythm behind center last night and now showing rhythm while at a basketball game and on his phone. He's a multi-talented guy. I don't know guy. if he's singing or performing into the phone or what he was doing there, but uh, he performed pretty well last night, 23 of 29 passing. Was that touchdown run of his not one of the great look-offs because he totally froze the defense yeah, looking right, and then the next thing you know, he's got a, yep. an Wide open alley open. to the end zone. Not going to go that time for Marquis Reed, and the rebound coming down to Asheville, and here come the Bulldogs. Burnett in the lane to Thomas. Give DeVoe credit for the defense. Thomas gets it back, and he gets the bounds. And it's been a good start for him. And He's in double figures. Yep. First scorer on the UNCA side. He gets double digits. He has 10. Reed leads all scorers with 11. Nashville's led by as many as six. Tigers have enjoyed a couple of five-point advantages in the opening half. Bulldogs, you can see why they're picked to win the Big South Conference. A very underrated mid-major league. Oliver, a little pump fake. That one, an attempt for two. Vanetta and the Bulldogs will go the other way. Vanetta and Oliver might have bailed him out. So A.J. Oliver picking out the personal. His mom, the head coach of Clemson women's team, and her ball club was getting on a bus to travel out to Ruston, Louisiana before this one. In this case, you see A.J. was hoping that traveling would have been the call there. But uh, in this case, it instead is the Tigers' seventh team foul. And for Oliver, that is his second. Vanetta back to the line, 79%. Not the leader on their team. That was the front end of a one-and-one, and off the 
miss. We've got a foul called on Seeger. That'll be the second on the freshman. UNC Asheville hurting themselves here in the first half from the foul line, just three for six. Really good shooting team. They're 45% beyond the arc, 47% from the field overall, but 66% from the line. You'd think a team that good would be higher in the 60s. Yeah, and their opponents so far have made 75%. So yeah. They had a couple of close losses, one at Vanderbilt, that made the difference in the game. The Bulldog by Teague. Well, T got a Cincinnati, Ohio. You'll see him on both ends. A lot of folks missed on him up that way. Here's Grantham from downtown, and Dante Grantham knocking down the tray. Now one out of three in the ball game. He's got five points. We mentioned Marquise Reed's getting close to a thousand. Grantham coming into the ball game at 9:38, so put him at 9:43 in his quest to get to that magic right. number. And what a start to the year for Grantham, shooting 69, almost 70 percent from the field. And Many of them have been long range. The thing I like about Grantham this year is how well he's playing away from the ball. Right. Doing a lot of things and drawing a lot of attention. But he's gotten a lot more opportunities close to the basket. And I think that's helped his confidence. And it's continued throughout the entire, entire season. And Trey giving the Tigers their biggest advantage of the game so far. And Ted Valentine on the baseline. You saw him in the background of that Grantham shot. Was instructing on something. I'm not necessarily sure what the crowd reaction was to. But anyway, here we go. Tigers with about two minutes to go before the half looking to do something they've done well. And that's the ball games at the break. And they finished halves very well. Oh, what a nice backdoor, but Benetta can't finish. Good look that time. DeVoe on the drive, but he was fouled before then. And a hard fall by Rackley. Rayquan Miller called in the region. Other end, look at that. I guess Sims maybe got, got a finger down. Got a little piece of it. That's his second block of the game. Other end, and you saw the bump out high. So 17 fouls on UNCA means that Gabe DeVoe will have a one on one opportunity. First free throws of the game, uh, Pete, for the Tigers. Haven't been all that many trips to the line for DeVoe so far this season, but he has yet to miss, and that continues. Eight out of eight now, the early going. Had an interesting game last week in the ACC. I believe Virginia may have won a game without shooting a free throw attempt. <laughs> and two out of two on his first trip for Gabe DeVoe and the first two free throws in this game by the Tigers. An eight-point advantage as they grow their biggest lead of the game and we've got whistles in front of the Clemson bench. And we're going to get an illegal screen called against Ahmad Thomas. So what do you know? A Thomas on either side. Each wears the number 14 and each now has two fouls. And each has an illegal screen. Four illegal screens now called in the game. Two to two. Back to a little trap pressure for Asheville. Tigers look to build the double figure advantage and Mitchell, as you say, he rarely misses when he attacks the basket that way. And, well, Nick McDevitt has seen enough. The UNC Asheville coach will call his first time out. He had one to burn and he looks up at the scoreboard. This has been a competitive game from the start, but suddenly the Tigers have built a 10 point lead on his Bulldogs. Nice little bit drive to the basket by Mitchell. Which he's done now three times. All of his baskets are drives to the hoop. Tigers had a 9-0 run earlier. Now they're on a 7-0 run. And again, pushing Asheville into some scoring droughts in this game as well. Real impressed with Clemson's perimeter defense. I know that was a priority with Coach Burnell going into this game. Because uh, Asheville shooting almost 47% on threes coming in. And they've really done a good job getting out on the perimeter. Just one made field goal, made three for Asheville in the first half. And holding them to 24 points in general with just a minute 24 to go. And maybe the biggest number of all in this game is that Macy Oteague averages nearly 15 a game. Top scorer and a contender for their league player of the year. And he has not dented the scoreboard no. yet. And a shout out to him. That's him with the ball right there at midcourt. 
Marquis Reed and others having a lot to do with that. The defense they've played so far. Just into the game, around the ball. Donovan Gilmore, he can score in a hurry for him. See if they set something up for T. He will penetrate left of the lane and off the window. And that's the first bucket of the game for the sophomore out of Walnut Hills High in Cincinnati. First basket in a while for Asheville. I guess that would be the reverse announcer, Jim. There you have it, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is the fifth possession of zone by Ashman. Mitchell, Grantham, oh, and what a pretty move from underneath. Grantham kissing it off the window. He's now got seven, and the Tigers back out to a 10-point lead. Well, he knew he was close to the basket. He kind of really didn't know where he was until he got up in the air, but he had a nice correction and made it. Two-second differential. We wind down here in the opening half. Almost a pick steal by Grantham. Instead, Bear, a little bit too strong in the pass. And the turnover gives it back to the Tigers with just under 17 to play. And in terms of giving it up, Asheville now getting close to 10 in the ball game. That was their ninth. Tigers just four in the opening half. I'm sure Coach McDivitt appreciated his unselfishness, but he really should have taken a little six-foot jumper. Mitchell looked inside and said he'll take it there himself and that Seager is rejecting it off the glass as the half comes to an end. Well, UNCA went up 6-0 out of the gate. Tigers though quickly got things rolling and they'll head to halftime with a 10-point advantage. Clemson 5-0 this season when leading at the half. UNCA has trailed just once at halftime this year and they are 0 and 1. A battle of the Big South Conference favorite, Macy O.T., Nick McDevitt, and UNC Asheville and Little John Coliseum. Grant Brown Allen Company looking to stay unblemished on the home court. Ten-point lead at the break. Teams are warming up for the second half. Tigers the ten-point advantage on UNCA. Back here with you in Little John Coliseum and really... A tale of about three minutes of the opening half and then the remaining 17 as Asheville came out of the gate with that 6-0 run. And you see why they're, they're picked to win their conference. You know, as I'm watching UNCA play, I see a potential 14 seed in March <laughs> late in the game against the number three being right there. But they've got a bunch of athletic guys. They've got a 6-3 senior named Ahmad Thomas. I think he thinks he's about 6-8. Yeah, he had a great first half, 5 of 7 from the field. And, uh, yeah, gets a lot of his points inside. He's made some threes this year, but uh, he's done a good job against the Tigers. Bear came off the bench, the sophomore from Germany, and had a nice block. And there's Thomas scoring again on the inside. Bear made their only three-point shot of the first half, as, uh, and that was kind of a lucky <laughs> shot as it was. Uh, the defense was pretty good for uh, Asheville on the inside. And there's Bear again with the dunk. He had seven points in the first half. Tigers... Uh, play pretty good uh, defense there, but uh, Thomas again with the bucket. And you see the other really good young athlete they've got in Jalen Seegers. Very athletic team. Tigers, though, doing a nice job. Well, Marquise Reed picking up where he left off the other night. Shelton Mitchell and crew also doing the same when they had the big second half. Instead, those two had a pretty good scoring first half with Reed leading all scores so far with 11. Yeah, Reed had a good first half, made three three-pointers there. Here's a nice block on the inside by Sims. He's got two blocks in the first half. Good feed by Reed uh, to DeVoe for the dunk. And uh, Thomas didn't play that much in the first half due to foul trouble, but had a nice hook there. And there's probably the uh, play of the first half by Trapp with a little fake behind the back to go in to score. And Dante Grantham had another solid first half with seven. And uh, Gabe DeVoe with another drive and score there and uh, Mitchell one of his three field goals in the first half all of them were driving layups as uh, coach Brunel happy with that the uh, way the Tigers finished the first half with a 10-point lead it was just 24 to 22 at one point and uh, the Tigers then stretched it out to a 10-point lead in intermission closing the half on that 12-4 run and UNCA their head coach Nick McDevitt fifth season he Played for them a little over a decade ago. He played for a guy named Eddie Biedenbaugh. And you can tie Eddie Biedenbaugh back to Clemson basketball lore because when Eddie Biedenbaugh was head coach at Davidson College back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, a young man named Rick Barnes was trying to get a job in coaching. 
came for an interview uh, with Eddie Biedenbaugh at Davidson, and I know you remember what uh, Rick Barnes would tell uh, in that story. Well, Rick Barnes, Eddie Biedenbaugh, I guess there was a miscommunication as to uh, uh, when the appointment was going to take place, and uh, Rick ended up staying in, in his office, sitting outside uh, his office for eight hours that day. <laughs> and the beaten boy, I guess, had gone play golf and finally came uh, back into this to close up his office. And uh, there was Rick Barnes. He figured he better talk to the young man. Uh, if he's going to wait there eight hours, he must have been serious about getting that job. I think in uh, typical self-deprecating fashion, Barnes said, I think I pretty much guilted him into hiring me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tiger is with a feed to Thomas, but he can't corral it. Good Tiger idea. He was open. Yeah. From the corner, three on the way, and the lid remains on for Drew Rackley and the Bulldogs. Tigers are pretty efficient turnovers so far, as they had just four in the first half. Good anticipation for Thomas, but he ran out of real estate on the sidelines. Plenty of time on the shot clock off of that inbound. Tigers have been man for man every possession so far. Uh, Asheville is back in a man for man. They've been man for man most of the first half. Five on the shot clock. Reed loading up for another three. And Marquise Reed came into the ball game. We noted 32%. Tigers as a team hitting from a 37% beyond the arc. But a fine afternoon so far for the. Tigers Jr. originally from Landover, Maryland. He's 4-3 now at 14 points, Pete. Teague didn't get his first bucket in the ball game until late in the first half, and he's their top scorer, so you know how the Tigers set up the scouting report for this game. Rackley driving, a little floater, and he gets the roll. Nice play by Drew Rackley, a sophomore. Another guy from the state of Ohio. He comes from... New Concord, Ohio, played at the same high school as a fellow named Jay Burson you may have heard of, one of the great guards ever to come out of that state, played at Ohio State back in the 80s. Played at John Glenn High School. Grands off, almost lost the handle, instead loses the ball. And Teague, and look at Reed for the personal foul. So the Tigers coming into this half with a 10-point lead and Mark Lewis Reed helping build on it right there. Yeah, he knocked down some key threes in the second half against Ohio State. He's continued that today and Rackley is a nice scorer there and a little runner, which is a tough shot for right-handed player going away from the basket. Figured this pace in his quest to get to a thousand points, Mark Lewis Reed will probably maybe get it in the home game against ULL here just before Christmas. Thomas inside, changes hands, can't get the bounce, and Elijah Thomas going for the rebound, and Manuk coming over the back. So a driving shot for Thomas has been very effective in the paint, and uh, Clemson's Thomas gets the, uh, gets the board. Two on Winook, who's one of their key inside players. Driving inside, he took Rackley all the way to the rack, and he gets the bucket. A 16-point game so far for Marquise Reed. Great use of the left hand by Reed. Little backdoor Rackley, pretty feed Thomas, and he'll lay it up. No good. Vanetta step through. Dante Grantham with the rejection. Asher will keep possession. Sure, if you would see Asheville's Thomas heard footsteps from Clemson's Thomas on that previous play. Nice block by Dante Grant. There's so many different things for you in the stat sheet block shots, steals, assists. Yeah, I think when you play Dante Grantham, if you're an opponent, you, you forget he's 6 8 because he can go outside so much and we'll get the double dribble called. And well, a wry, guilty smile on the face of Jalen Seegers with that turnover. But that's the thing about Grantham. He can play a, almost like he's a true four, but also play probably a one through a three if he Absolutely. really has to. Oh, yeah. There have been a lot of times where he's put the ball up and run the offense. 
Mitchell Thomas and a throw down. What a great find by Shelton Mitchell. Leading the Tiger Ball Club just under five assists a game, and that's why. Yeah, he had over 100 assists last year with the Tigers. Spin move, Veneta. DeVoe on the defense. Clean block, says the official off to their right. From the corner, Grantham. Look at Elijah Thomas inside. An attempt to go back up. He'll head to the line. Elijah only played eight minutes in the first half. He's uh, got a lot of vim and vigor at him here in the second half. A nice dunk on the inside. His second dunk of the game. He's got six points, three for three from the field. In that case, one Thomas foul in the other. So Ahmad Thomas of UNCA with his third personal. As you see here in the half. Two team fouls now for the Bulldogs, one for the Tigers. Clemson's Thomas, 73% from the line this year. A significant bump from the 48% number he put up last year. I don't know if bump is the uh, right adjective. Who did uh, he go from 47% to what he's now? Probably he Sierra. Know. He really worked hard uh, in the offseason, I want to point out. Uh, we had our offices uh, in the uh, football stadium in the summer when they were renovating Jervie. And I remember coming out a couple of days, and it was this tall guy running up the hill behind the press box. And it wasn't a football player. It was Elijah Thomas getting extra work in on his conditioning. The figurative mountain he has overcome at the line over that time, one out of two. Here's T. They've got to get him going if they have any chance to erase this 16-point deficit. Biggest lead of the game so far for Clemson. Trying to go 7-0 all-time in the series. Nothing doing on that drive. And Elijah Thomas coming down with it. Mitchell with some contact. DeVoe. Another three for Gabe DeVoe and the Tigers. They're six made three of the ball game. And for DeVoe, he's now one out of three beyond the arc. The Tigers are four for five in this second half already. Nationals is one for seven. You see at the bottom of your screen, Nick McDevitt giving the business to the official right in front of him. Bear a little spin move from the baseline. And there's Grantham with the rebound. That is beginning to add up for the Tigers senior. He now has five. He and DeVoe leading the team in that category with five apiece. Thomas feeding DeVoe. Gabe tried to go off the glass. No, and Thomas of UNCA slipping. Looked like he might have hurt himself at first, but he bounces up. Bear this time from the right baseline. Nothing doing there, and the struggles continue for UNC Asheville. They're just 33% from the floor in the game. And in the second half, it's been tough going for them from the field. Thomas and Teague on the attack. And a follow by Bear. And a timeout will be called by the Bulldogs bench. Their second used in the ball game. 14.35 to go in our second half. Tigers have extended a 10-point halftime lead out to 17. Clemson's been on the attack. Shelton Mitchell and company with good finds. Gabe DeVoe training one from downtown. The Tigers rolling on toward win number seven. UNC Asheville's Nick McDevitt calling a timeout after that bucket for his team, which pulled him within 17. There has not been enough of this since about the 12-minute mark of the opening half. Now, I've been impressed with Bear. He's uh, got nine points. He's four or six from the field. A couple block shots and a couple rebounds. He's a six-foot-nine sophomore from Germany. He's really going to help this team. He's averaging 4.5 points a game coming in at 6'9 and 200, but he has combined for 25 points in their past two games. Against Wofford and USC Upstate, UNCA, they have two losses on the year. The opener, Rhode Island, they didn't play well. They lost that 84-60. to They feel like, other than an 11-2 run by Vandy in the second half, they might have won that game in Nashville. They eventually lost that by three, but they've got a team that, really also takes advantage of close by opponents as Clyde Trapp is just checked in and the Tigers freshman hitting his second career three-pointer and the lead grows to 20. 
But they've already played so far this year. Wofford and USC Upstate playing Clemson today. And then they've got a Tuesday night game in Greenville against Furman. That drive to the bucket by Seegers. UNCA's freshman won't go. Tigers on the attack again. And frankly, probably not the worst thing in the world for Bear to get that reach-in foul for Asheville. That'll be their third of the half. A timeout again on the court. A 20-point advantage for the Tigers over UNC Asheville as we're now at the under-16 official timeout with Tim Bray, Pete Gannity with you back here in Little John. And we noted upcoming on Tuesday night a visit to Furman, which isn't a long drive at all, of course, from Asheville's campus on the north side of Greenville. They play smaller division school Milligan. They'll play Western Carolina in the downtown arena in Asheville, the U.S. Cellular Center, part of a doubleheader, and you saw their other games beyond that. Tigers with another home game, but not until Saturday against the Bulldogs of Samford, a team many think can win the Southern Conference. They're coached by Scott Padgett. Then, of course, still ahead for Clemson, a trip down to Florida to play the Gators, and an assignment against a really good-looking Louisiana Lafayette team in here just before Christmas. Just one game though in the next 13 days. Wow, look at that feed that time and a finish courtesy of Dante Grantham. Tigers doing a great job feeding the back door and a rare foul called in the second half. And this one on Clemson, Shelton Mitchell picking up his second. Assist, assist by Mitchell on that last play. Very fine play, good job cutting to the hoop by Grantham also. Shelton Mitchell, as we told you, right about five assists per game, and he's matched that today. And You know, you look and you see teams that are successful, and if you can score in the 80s, and you know, Clemson got into that territory a lot when they changed the style of last year, you should see assist numbers in the five to seven range for a point guard. Good job denying it the bucket that time by Grantham. Tigers looking to build more, and they'll do it with a jam by Grantham. A little bit of showtime out of the senior. Another fine pass for Mitchell. Alley oop from Shelton. Boy, those two. Dynamite combo from high low. Here is Teague, who's been kept quiet, and that'll continue. It goes over the backboard. So another missed long range jumper by a UNCA team that had shot 58 and 57% beyond the arc, as we see Grantham. Pretty play right there. Nice long lob pass. Yeah, UNC Asheville, 23 of 42 on threes in their last two games combined. And their victories in Spartanburg. And one out of 11 so far this afternoon. Let's see what the Tigers have in their bag of tricks this time in terms of playing some team hoops instead. A little back in by Elijah Thomas. No good defense that time by the sophomore pair. First miss of the game for Thomas, who came in shooting 70% from the field, 35 out of 50. Rackley, one out of 12 beyond the arc now for the Bulldogs. Again, as a team, these past two games just weren't uh, a bit of an aberration. They came in hitting 45% of the three-pointers. Trying desperately to cut into this 24-point deficit. Reverse not going to go for Seegers. And Elijah Thomas pulling down the board. A little intimidation factor there for Thomas, who now has five rebounds in the game. Mitchell is looking for DeVoe down low. Five on the shot clock. DeVoe inside, rejected by Thomas, who then picked it out of the air. What a nice play by the 6'3 senior. Another attempt at three, and finally they get a second three-pointer to go. They're now two out of 13. And Jalen Seegers, who was just two out of five in his career before he knocked that one down, or at least coming into the afternoon. Both three-pointers, though, by bench players. In this game from Nashville. And Thomas, it can't be more wide open than that. The no-look find by Gabe DeVoe. And that's the kind of thing that'll drive Nick McDevitt, the UNCA coach, crazy. Guy gets that wide open down low, and they were trying to deny him all throughout the first half. Yeah, they have not defended the, the pick and roll, I'm sure, to his liking so far in this game. Tigers about to kick this thing into cruise control. Elijah Thomas in overdrive right there on the pretty feed from Gabe DeVoe. It's a 56-33 Clemson advantage. Tigers rolling along here as Clemson is going after win number seven on the year. And that guy's probably excited about the 
football pairing earlier and obviously trying to show similar rhythm to that we saw of Kelly Bryant, the quarterback earlier when we isolated on him. Got some young fans here today. Got a yep. few students also hanging out. They, uh, not maybe as many students because they uh, probably got back a little late last night. From Perhaps. Charlotte. Now, granted, this was a 3 p.m. Eastern time tip today, so you figure it was only probably an hour before their scheduled wake-up time on a typical Sunday. <laughs> so maybe they've joined us in the second half. Inbound play, and Thomas can finish and give credit that time to Scott Spencer on the defense. He just checked in. He's been getting extended minutes, but I believe that's the first time we've seen him today. Yeah, good, good coach McDivita. Credit for a good inbounds play, but the Tigers defended it. By the way, I want to say hello to our friend Jim Davis as he's Watching, he was going to join me today on the telecast. And Tim, great to be back alongside of you. But Pooch uh, had to tend to some matters, so he couldn't be on hand. As Sims is going to try a while, and won't go. But we certainly uh, wish Jim well. Look forward to seeing him back here soon. Driving to the bucket, Vanetta, and that place is not going to work in that situation. They say Thomas was on the baseline and back over the Tigers to go. That's three blocks now in just ten minutes for our freshman Sims on the inside. A good job. Looking off on Thomas to get that block. You look at the length, 6'7", 237 on the freshman Sims. He might grow a little bit more. And just the wingspan, he's a really good kind of defender. Of course, yeah. next time out for the Tigers, our next telecast is DeVoe, I think, was thinking about a jam. But Thomas had something to do with it. But the Sanford Bulldogs will be here on Saturday for that 3 o'clock game. If you can't make it out, join us for the telecast. And a third three made in the game by the Bulldogs. That one by Raquan Miller. He came into the ball game made out of 14. That Sanford game is going to be tough. They've got a couple of transfers in from Power 5 schools. They've got a really good point guard named Kristen Cunningham. And he's been running the show for Scott Padgett for a while. And that'll be another test. Tigers playing a lot of mid-major teams that are picked to win their conference. Right. That's only going to make you better in games like this. And that time, a wraparound called on Elijah Thomas. That'll be his third. Unusual shooting style of Mr. Miller, but it's worked for him all year. You know, coming to this game, Asheville had eight players who had made a three, and seven of them had percentages of 43% or better. They've only made three threes in this game. And Asheville, a team that shot 41% from the field in the opening half, which is good, but they came in shooting 47% in this half, though. But coming out of that last time out, they were just 3 out of 17 in the second half. A little fadeaway that time with a baseline and Raquan Miller. Not far from Asheville's hometown, Marion, North Carolina. McDowell High School. He was one of the best high school scorers in Western North Carolina his senior year. Better than 23 a game, and he's given a little bit of life here to the Bulldogs. Yeah, first 5-0 run for Asheville in the second half. Shelton, I should say Spencer, rather, just checked in. Not going to get that one to go. And the drive to the bucket by Thomas, no. And good defense by both Spencer and Grantham. I think really right. defended Thomas well the second half. He's 0 for 7. A guy named Shelton, who just had the ball, who'll get it back. It's Shelton Mitchell, a fine job distributing. Dante Grantham, ho oh, ho! It looked gentle and it got fierce in a hurry. And Grantham building on a good afternoon for him. 13 points now. And he and Reed, the two double-figure scorers for the Tigers, Marquise of 16. His third dunk of the second half. Man, that was just thunder in a bottle. Back to Spencer. Scott can't get him to go on the rebound. Four went up to the Bulldogs. Got good form, good arch on that jumper. Just didn't quite go down. Tigers have led by as many as 24 in the second half. And that one wide of the target. One up. And a turnover by the Bulldogs. And only about a dozen for them so far. But it just seems like they have compounded things and allowed Dante Grantham and crew to set up offensive shop like that. Now the UNC Asheville Bulldogs looking up at a 20-point deficit. The tall gentleman there in the coat and tie sitting down. Wes Long, a former Clemson Tiger in the early 2000s. Late Larry Shiat, early Oliver Purnell. And he uh, played his high school basketball in the upstate at Malden High. And now he's gotten into coaching. And another guy out of this Clemson program. He, he was 
at Clemson when someone named Will Wade. You may have heard that name That's right. before. Uh, they were buddies, but uh, they were both managers at one point. And then West was uh, on the team in the 2000-2001 season. And so, the guy who's been part of this Clemson program, there are a lot of those out in coaching now. Who knows if things work out if UNCA has the kind of success that they've enjoyed recently. A year ago, they were co-champs in their conference, the Big South. And they were the tourney champs in 16 as the beat goes on for Marcus Reed. Getting close to a 20-point afternoon, and now is 19. But with their success, they've got a chance to obviously get noticed. And who knows, their head coach, Nick McDevitt, a guy you might hear mentioned for some bigger jobs if they have a... Another successful season. A little elbow pull up by Teague. It's been a tough day for their leading scorer and the reigning freshman of the year in the Big South. Tigers have really done a good job on Teague. He's just one for seven from the field. And of course, Thomas is 0 for seven in the second half after he got 10 points in the first half. Teague defending Gabe DeVoe. Reed, not far from a, another 20 point ball game. And Dante Grantham decided to take a little bit off on that fastball and just a gentle flush. And Are we watching up. Dante Grantham or Tree Rollins here? Four field goals, four dunks in the <laughs> second. 15 points in the game for Grantham. Tree holds the record for dunks in the game, by the way, at eight his senior year in Little John Coliseum against Wake Forest. And I want to say that 76-77 or 77-78 is when they brought the dunk back. His to senior year, they brought it back his senior year, which was also my senior year in college. And it was very exciting after not having it for nine years. The alley-oop kiss off the glass was the most thrilling play in college hoops before that. Look at Sims spinning inside, showing you some game. Off that seven-point effort the other night at Ohio State, Amir Sims, the freshman now, with that bucket. Vanetta has been tough going for him. He came in averaging just under 15 a game. Gets the basket right there, but he only has half a dozen so far. Only the second field goal of the second half for UNC Asheville starters. Stay on the Tigers end. Marquise Reed. That was his fifth three, by the way. That's a career high for three-point goals in a game for Marquise Reed. Uh, and there's a nice pass for Gabe DeVoe inside to Grantham for his fourth dunk of the game. And he now has 15 points. He's reached his season average. You know, with 938 in his career, and he and Reed will get to 1,000 here within the next half dozen games, at least, if not sooner. And no friendly roll that time, but a little putback. Clean up for Sims. Who, when he had seven the other night, that was the early career high for him. He's now got a couple of quick field goals in this last stretch. And haven't had all that many fouls called in the second half. This is the seventh combined, and he'll get Sims for his second. See, Grantham the assist right there as he was able to battle for the rebound. And he did, his but he, he actually... Uh, got caught in the net a little bit, so uh, that should have been a goal ten, but he's not called. And we're going to get a hold on trap. As we saw the facial expression right in front of us of Macy Oteague, and so for Clyde Trap, that personal is the Tigers' 15 foul. And you see Teague at the bottom of your screen going to the bench. And again, he's quite a player, averaging about 15 a game. First team preseason all-conference. Came out of Cincinnati's Walnut Hills. He led the state of Ohio in their largest division, Division I, in scoring his senior year. And that's a state that has some real good talent. Tigers have a real good freshman, but it's the senior who's got to clean up for the young guy. And, well, let's just say that Sims is about to go thunder jam, but Grantham right there, and Dante now with... 17-point afternoon. And with five dunks in the second half. Tree's, uh, Tree's record's in danger here as we come into the last few minutes. Donovan Gilmore couldn't finish down low. Here's an alley-oop for Trapp. Oh! And a T will be called because they're going to say Clyde Trapp hung on the rim. But Marquis Reed saw some of those Shelton Mitchell and Gabe DeVoe feeds. He wanted to get into the assist act on the highlight reel. 
And the final op pass. But yeah, he did do the chin-up action and slap the board for good measure. <laughs> I think the slap the board was the final marble in the plinko that uh, immediately triggered the take. Just in case right you there, didn't yeah. see me hang up. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that was uh, maybe the last piece of evidence that the prosecutor needed. Kevin Vanetta hitting the free throw. So the Tigers building this lead beyond 30 just moments ago. That was the 10th dunk of the game for the Tigers. And in a stunning development, I believe, Fly Trap has been uh, summoned to the bench. And yes, we just saw him right there. Our angle I couldn't see, but... I would suppose there was a bit of a talking to uh, might have been, might have been, came off the court. In case you're wondering, the Clemson record for dunks in the game is 16 against Georgia State in 1990, the days of Campbell and Davis. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Grantham has it knocked away by Thomas, and running it down is Rackley. Here come the Bulldogs, but too strong on the pass for Seeger. So I would suppose the Asheville faithful put this one in the same category as their opening game up in Kingston, Rhode Island, against the Rams of URI. It's uh, one of the few times this year when they just have not been in a position to win a game. One of their good wins on the road this year was at Austin P in overtime. That's a tough place to go play. Yes. Up in Clarksville, Tennessee, and that one's going to help them as far as getting mid-major respect at Selection Sunday. They're able to get the bid out of their league. But they have run into a Clemson team that's getting things figured out in a hurry here. Yeah, this was a 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24 to 22 game in the first half. Kind of late. AJ Oliver, with his fellow freshman fans, Donnell in the corner. Baseline drive, count it, and he's fouled. So Mark Donnell will have a chance to add on to this Clemson advantage when we come back. Pretty nice drive by the transfer from. As per usual, the Tiger flag waving proudly, and this Clemson team has to be proud of what they've been able to do after that big win in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, which the Tigers now have won 10 of their 17 matchups in that series with the victory in Columbus, Ohio, the other night. But nice uh, return game. Sometimes you come off that kind of big road win against a Power 5 team, and you're a little bit sluggish. First minute and a half or so, it kind of looked that way, but a quick timeout by Brad Brownell provided the beet juice uh, this team needed, if you will, and they've been going on all cylinders since. Yeah, great assist to turnover ratio, 15 to eight so far in the game. Donnell, five out of five on free throws coming into the game, so his first miss of the Tiger. UNCAC is Clemson playing a zone. You could tell in preseason, I asked Brad, he said, yeah, we're, we're looking at some zone, but you could tell the man with Indiana basketball roots uh, had a hard time saying the word zone related to defense, and they'll get trapped on another foul. But again, you've got to adjust with the times, and isn't it ironic that so many teams that used to play man-to-man, -man, and that time the Tigers are showing you how they can collapse, are now moving to zone in the three-point era. In the old days, you packed a zone in to deny the lane, right. and you were worried about a team shooting over the zone. Well, Duke's a team that's played a lot of zone yeah. here in the early season and used it to get yeah. to the number one lane. Under a, a coach who is obviously in a class by himself, but a disciple of the all-time man-to-man coach, Bob Knight. Right. Bear will kick it out on the right wing, and rattles off. No good. Um, three attempts that time for Seekers. Tigers have played Big South foe Winthrop several times over the years. Drive inside. Look at Bear on the hard foul. Uh, surprised when I was getting ready for this game to see these teams hadn't met since back in the 0405 season as we see the move inside by A.J. Oliver he will go to the line now the Tigers haven't seen in a game 
UNCA until today since the 0405 season. But you, my friend, and I and uh, the Clemson team of 2010 and 11 saw more than they wanted to of the UNC Asheville Bulldogs in Dayton, Ohio on a March night in 2011 when we were sitting getting ready for a radio broadcast to begin at 9 p.m., which we were in place for that and did. And they were playing Texas San Antonio in one of the first four games. And it was a tight game in regulation. We came on the air. There were probably about three minutes to go in regulation. And they went to an overtime against Texas San Antonio. Then they went to a double overtime. And you and I did a 50-minute pregame 50 show minutes. before we actually started our legitimate pregame show. And we did not take a commercial. No, we, we did talk, not. We talked for 50 straight <laughs> Yes. Yes, we did. And eventually the Clemson game against UAB, which was supposed to tip, I think, at around 9.35, didn't tip till about, what, 10.25 that night? Right. Uh, to make a long story just a slightly bit longer, uh, the win against UAB led to a plane flying out at 1.30 in the morning with the Clemson team, landing in Tampa, and a weary team walking into a Tampa hotel at 5.30 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. We played Tuesday night. Trying to get some sleep, going to a shoot-around later in the day, and then tipping off against West Virginia at noon, at noon on a Thursday. And after that, they changed the rules. Yes, they did. <laughs> because that was absurd. <laughs> so 1.30 in the morning on a Wednesday, wheels up in Dayton, Ohio. Noon on a Thursday, tip-off against a yeah, pretty good uh, team. Suffice it to say, Donnell going for the putback, not going to happen. Here comes Asheville in West Virginia. And a Tiger team that led deep into that game, yeah. only to lose by five on yeah, a couple of absolutely. quick steals near midcourt and buckets. Nice drive to the basket by Rackley. So anyway, that's the, the memory you and I have uh, of UNC Asheville in terms of being Find on the Find a drive to the rack by Rackley here, a little double pump scoop. Uh, I have a different uh, memory of UNC Asheville, and the first meeting between these two teams was in the 79-80 season, and it was actually senior day for the Clemson team that went to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament, ah. and the coach at UNC Asheville at the time, who I uh, don't remember at the time, uh, anyway, he decided to hold the ball. On our Clemson senior day, Clemson in those days there was no shot clock. Yeah. Clemson went 38 to 27, still the fewest points scored by an opponent in Little John Coliseum. And of course, they were in the same university system as one Dean Smith, so why not try to borrow what he would do in mm -hmm. Little John at time? Interesting how the schedule used to work out. And so often, look at those old Clemson schedules back in the old 14-game uh, ACC days. And you'd often see a non-conference game between regular season play and the tournament. A.J. Oliver delivering right in front of the bucket right there. The freshman who still really hasn't gotten untracked offensively, but shown you a nice move. Yeah, this I think this is his nice best move of the year so far. And the paint, the double pump. It's the opponent in the air. It gives the Tigers a 32-point lead. Tigers have been great in the paint this entire game. That's 48 points in the paint, including 10 dunks. And uh, this is the most dunks Clemson's had in the game since February 11th, 1998, when the Tigers had wow. 10 dunks against Western Carolina. Three-point play for A.J. The Tigers extend their biggest lead of the ball game, 33 points. By the way, uh, on that UNC Asheville story playing Texas San Antonio in Dayton, they won. And correct me if I'm wrong, didn't they get to go up the road to Cleveland for yeah. their next round game? Yeah, they just had to yeah. go across the street. They got to go to Cleveland. Oh, nice fadeaway that time. Off the bench is Justin Brown. The Tigers have checked in Lyles Davis, a fan favorite here in Little John, as we come up on a minute to play. Now trying to shake the defense of Gilmore. A little feed by Trap. I'm sorry, I said Trap. I saw the zero and said Malik William had just checked in. Appearing in his fourth game as a Tiger. And Rackley from downtown. He is a 50% three point shooter. Tigers will have time off before Sanford comes in here for a 3 o'clock game on Saturday. Quick turnaround for UNCA. Back on the road for them in Greenville against Furman on Tuesday. Ooh, a nice move. Nice little move with the baseline turnaround by William. Four quick points for the Orlando, Florida native off the bench. Also into the game, Isaac Fields, and he gets that rebound and a head for William. Trying to get himself half a dozen, and he wow. will. Wow. He took that one on four. Man, <laughs> he is microwave. Malik William. 
Showing some post moves here at the end of the game. Might get him some PT the next game. Final 10 seconds. That one from way downtown, drained by Seager. The freshman, and it'll make this one look just slightly more respectable, but Clemson Tigers kicked it in gear midway through the opening half at a 10-point lead of the break, and that leads to the 83-52 victory against the Bulldogs. Tigers now 7-0 all-time in the series against their neighbors to the north. Clemson improves to 7-1 on the year. UNCA falls to 5-3, but you can tell they are going to be a force in their league. How about this Clemson team, though? Showing they could get it done up at Ohio State the other night, and today a decisive victory that many expected. Yeah, very efficient game, a double-double for uh, Dante Grantham, and only eight turnovers for the Tigers, kind of like the football team last night had just one, just eight for the Tigers. As you just saw, Samford's in here. Another team called Bulldogs on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Make it out to Little John if you can. If not, join us for our telecast Saturday. On behalf of Tim Bray and our fine crew, Pete Gannity saying so long. Here in Little John Coliseum, another win for the Tigers, and this has been a presentation of ESPN.